Hello, and thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Bradley Butler. I am the executive director and curator at Main Street Arts in Clifton Springs, New York. Uh, tonight's event is a virtual studio tour with Sierra Matsuo and Luann Wilson from Seattle, Washington. Uh, this is the last, uh, last event in a series of online events held in conjunction with our exhibition, The Cup, the Mug. Uh, both Sierra and Luann are included in this year's exhibition, which is an online invitational. Uh, this year's show includes 98 cups by 20 artists from 12 states, and uh, sadly it comes to an end tomorrow, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, tomorrow being December 3rd, Saturday. Uh, so you have until then to go and buy any cups you may have had your eye on, uh, especially from these two artists. I think it's a great idea to listen to what they had to say and then probably go out and, you know, buy all the cups that are left. I think that's the best idea. Um, I think they would agree. So. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to introduce each of them, uh, and I'm going to show you uh, some of their work as I talk about them. Uh, so Sierra Matsuo is a fourth and third generation Japanese Filipina artist from uh, Aiea, Hawaii. Uh, originally a microbiology major, she first moved to Seattle to work in the biotech industry. Uh, in 2018, she signed up for a two-hour introductory pottery class and was instantly drawn to the craft. Since then, she has worked in various pottery studios and stores in Seattle. Um, and when not playing with clay, Sierra enjoys rock climbing, reading horror sci-fi books, and making bento with her uh, best friend, Cuppy, always by her side. Uh, and <clears throat> Luann Wilson is an illustrator and ceramicist uh, living and working in Seattle, Washington. She began her career in biology getting a degree from the University of California, Berkeley, and working in environmental research and museum preservation taxidermy. Uh, before leaving the academic world to pursue, to pursue her art, uh, she has been a professional potter for the last three years and uses her history and knowledge as a scientist and illustrator to transform simple shaped vessels into delicately painted stories of the natural world in our everyday lives. Um, so you got a little bit of a sense of each of their work, um, and uh, we've got both of them joining us uh, from the same studio because they share a space. And um, I guess before we get into seeing the space, um, would you like to both introduce yourselves a little bit? Uh, sure. So I'm Luann, not Sierra. <laughs> um, and yeah, just like you said, I started... Um, in science and biology. I actually did um, museum outreach education for many years. That's what brought me to Seattle is I worked at the Burke Museum here um, doing uh, outreach for them. And before that, I did do taxidermy for several years at Berkeley. I did, uh, was really, really pushed um, the boundary between my love of art and science, which was really fun. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to share about myself. Um, I now do pottery and actually, so Sierra and I share the studio space and currently our biggest project is not so much our personal pottery, but we're actually opening a pottery studio here in Seattle together. Um, so I, a lot of our focus has been on that recently. Mm -hmm. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sierra, not Luann. <laughs> um, a little bit about me. Uh, yeah, I'm born, uh, I was born in Hawaii. I, um, I've always done art and I have always loved science also. So uh, when going to school, I figured <laughs> it would maybe make more sense uh, financially to have a career that I could, uh, you know, like pay, pay, pay for my bills. <laughs> <laughs> A traditional building, um, <laughs> yes, but um, I was doing that for a while in Seattle, and I was actually going to grad school for bioinformatics, and I really wasn't enjoying myself. I, I was stressed out all the time, and I needed a creative outlet, so I took that intro to pottery class. Um, because while I have done a lot of art growing up, I had never tried pottery before. So I thought 
um, it would be something new to try and I instantly fell in love with it and uh, here I am now starting a studio with you. <laughs> oh, that, that's great and I think um, you know a lot of a lot of people who, who we've talked to through these events have had similar stories where they started doing something else and then all of a sudden it was like I don't know about this thing I'm doing and then they tried pottery and it was like oh where has this been all my life <laughs> so, it's really interesting. Them, yeah. <laughs> yeah what do you think it is about pottery that does that to people it's very therapeutic it's like tactile and transformative in a way that you can really transform whatever you're making with like your whatever you're going through internally can really like translate on to clay in a fun way so I think I don't know I think it's a really easy thing to feel attached to it's very personal yeah I agree with that and though for me like I think it helps you like stay focused and in the moment mm -hmm. um a lot of times you're either thinking of like the past or the future and with pottery you have to be in the now so I, I don't know I like that it is very therapeutic for me so. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't get to looks like for a long time so it's kind of like kind of just get to do whatever you want throw things at it and see what happens it's very like experimental too which is really fun and there's a lot of science in it right uh, <laughs> i mean there's stuff that happens in the kiln i mean molecules are disappearing or doing whatever they do you know so <laughs> that's got that has to have an attraction for two science people Definitely. Um, there's a lot you could like really heavily micromanage if you want to. And there's a lot that you can really heavily let go and not think about it all and see what happens. <laughs> you can go as deep or as shallow as you want to go and still get a good experience. <laughs> and how did, I mean, how did the two of you meet and come to be sharing a space and then starting this whole big thing together? We actually met um, when I was working in a studio in Seattle. Uh, Luann was a member at that studio, so uh, we got to know each other there, and then we had to, the, uh, COVID happened, so we, everyone had to leave the studio, and Luann had this garage space that she invited me into, and we built our little home studio here, um, but we really missed the community aspect of pottery, which is why we started looking into opening up a community pottery studio for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And since um, since we, we can't see that one yet, because it's very much in progress, um, can you tell us a little bit about what that, like the vision for that is and how, how you see that kind of come together? Yeah, so we've just acquired our location. So we're going to be in the Chinatown International District here in Seattle. Um, and the building that we're renting space in is actually um, a historical noodle and fortune cookie factory. So um, it was vacated about a year ago by that company. And uh, so the, they sold the fortune cookie noodle business, but they kept the, the family that owned it kept the building. Um, so now they're renting the building to several different businesses. And we are going to be on the second floor. Um, we have about 3,600 square feet on the second floor. Um, and it has amazing windows that look out over the city like all of downtown so it has this like amazing light in the day and this like beautiful nightscape at night which mm -hmm. is really exciting um and it's not just for pottery so that was one of the pieces that we really wanted to meld together is that both of us have such diverse backgrounds and even having done art our whole lives and then finding pottery last there's a lot of things that we sort of mashed together in our processes and other things that we enjoy. Um, and not a lot of studios here have mixed media with pottery. Um, so we're really looking to expand people's ability to sort of try things like new technologies, like we can have a laser cutter, we have like Cricut like paper cutters, like people can make patterns. Um, we also do uh, printmaking, we have a risograph printer. So we do print classes as well because um, we both did illustration before this. And um, so we're really, look, the whole space is gonna be about 70% like pottery focused things. I think that's about right. And then like 30%, we have like a space that's like a maker space room that 
people can sort of like cross everything over and with their pottery practice. Mm -hmm. That's that's really cool. And do you have um, do you have like a a, a timeline that you're willing to share publicly uh, about like what what when you plan on being open? <laughs> I mean, our, our, we're putting you on the spot. We've been pretty straightforward with our process. Um, it's a little bit, so like I said, we just received our keys to the building in October. November. Oh, sorry, November 1st. Oh, we finalized everything in October, got the keys early November 1st. Um, and we're still in the permitting process. So we have had all of our like first, first rundown of like getting our electrical and like plumbing and things like that. And um, our goal right now is to open in the beginning of 2023. So probably end of January, early February is our like stretch goal right now, figuring that out. Yes, yeah. we start paying rent on March 1st. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's our deadline. <laughs> yeah. yeah, But it's been a two year long process for us. Um, figuring out like we, ha we haven't owned businesses before aside from us selling our our own pottery um, at markets and online um, this is our first brick and mortar studio um, so we had to do everything from scratch and it's taken us this long but we're so close <laughs> <laughs> we can taste the the end of it all yeah. <laughs> that's great that's really exciting um and so but now you're in the garage studio yes so this is where our humble beginning yeah. <laughs> yeah yes so this is a garage and then we have it's basically a couple spaces in our like finished basement including the garage great um well do you want to um take us on a little little tour here sure all right you want to start off Lou? And... Hmm. Okay, cool. Oh, okay. oh I'm gonna be okay. Oh, lose the tour guide. All right. Oh, welcome welcome to the garage. Um, first of all, this is our main work table where of all of our hand building and underneath is storage of all of our reclaim, some of our glazing buckets, all the not pretty things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to hide under the table, um, tool areas, um, we have like our canvas top here. Really, all of this is focused on hand building things like if we have slab or we need to carve things or glazing, we work at this table. Mm -hmm. um, all of our glaze storage up on the wall. So um, we use a lot of commercial glazes. I do have a lot of dry materials to make my own glazes, but these glazers are so easy to use. Oh, eh? oh you want to hold yeah. it? Oh, yeah, you show. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I, um, we've been busy with the studio, so whenever we do do any work, I, I pretty much just use uh, Strictly uh, Amoco. Uh, we're a big fan of the satin mat. <laughs> <laughs> and then these coyote glazes are, are really fun. Um, here is our wedging table, uh, light and dark plays. This is a shelf that was built kind of like uh, like a baking rack, uh, you can actually put uh, wear boards uh, in whatever height you want. But right now it's just storage. <laughs> <laughs> we has it is it obvious that we haven't been making that often <laughs> recently? <laughs> we got other priorities right now. Yes, yeah. we have definitely had different priorities. Um, Luann and my wheels are right here. We have bats and tools. Um, and then our where storage. Yeah, we also share this uh, garage with my spouse who has like a bike workshop back here. <laughs> Behind the hidden curtain is a bike wow. shop. <laughs> yeah, so you're already having uh, different mediums in one space. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> here, we'll go through the other. We're gonna go through a door to get to this room. This is a, basically the, an office on the side of where the garage is. Um, and this is sort of like our maker space, um, office studio space. So this is where we house our risograph printer. Um, so, so we do do print workshops. Um, for anyone who isn't familiar with risograph, it's 
a type of printing machine that's it's sort of if you combine screen printing with like a Xerox printer. So it actually is a spot color machine. It prints one color at a time and like burns a master screen onto a drum and prints um, through the screen like a screen print would. So every color that you add to the page uh, has to go through the machine a different time for each color. Um, so these are some examples of our and some of our students work. Um, so to get uh, different colors, you can layer things. So this like orange is like a pink and a yellow layered on each other. Um, so this would be an example of a three color print. So just like screen printing, you can kind of combine things, um, but it's a really fun medium um, to work with because it's sort of the bright colors and um, textures of screen printing with the like quick, fast, ease of using a Xerox printer. <laughs> so it's like very, very quickly rewarding, like fast, fast pace, which is really fun. Yes, um, very helpful for when you're feeling very uh, stuck with your pottery and you need, you know, that quick fix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We need to feel successful at something, just use your reference something. Um, but we also have a couple other tools here. So um, this actually houses our laser cutter. Um, and we can cut things like extruders. Um, we've been making tools. Uh, here's like a press uh, mold we made. I don't know if you can kind of see um, for our like crowdfunding reward uh, pins that we've been making. And we make tools with it. Uh, we have a handheld extruder that we make a uh, die. Uh, yeah, you can basically yeah. make your own die cut shapes to extrude with, with mm -hmm. it, which is really fun. Oh, that's really interesting. I don't know if I've ever heard of um, people using laser cutter for things like that for clay. I mean, is that something that you're just like, well, we have a laser cutter, so we'll do this. Or I mean, how did, how did, how did that idea come around? Yeah. Um, it actually came around because we just saw people selling them in pottery stores like pottery stores were um, housing and selling like companies that were printing obviously laser cut dies for like just commercial artists to have like new styles of die cuts and I was like oh we have a laser cutter why don't we just try doing that <laughs> so we've been like playing around with like for our handles for our mugs we made our own die cuts so that we can have our like own handle shape for whatever mm -hmm. we want it to be like and it's just really exciting to get to play around and make mm -hmm. different things and like Sierra said we made um like press mold um like cookie cutter stamps for our um lapel pins that we made for our crowdfunding campaign um mm -hmm. it's just really it gives you a lot of freedom to do things that you would normally have to spend a lot of time doing by hand. <laughs> mm -hmm. We've also made um, stamps. We cut uh, rubber oh, yeah. to make our own stamps that we can make imprints on the pottery. Um, or even just like our signature stamps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With it too. Um, but yeah, so some of my, for my mugs that have the um, designs drawn on them, I will actually, I. I laser cut stamps that I just use like regular stamp ink on my bisquare. Mm -hmm. And then I use those as my patterns to like hand wax coat those lines that I then paint inside. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's really cool. Yeah, it's fun. All things that we're gonna have at the new studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So other people can do it too. <laughs> um, this is our closet that we have on the right is just like uh, shipping uh, material and pack packing supplies. Uh, also, we have like a photo booth. Uh, these are the like, <laughs> these are the props for the photo booth, but it's right here. And then that's pretty much for this room. Uh, it's gonna, wait, sorry. Okay, now we're gonna walk to the kiln area, which also doubles as the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> the machine room. <laughs> okay, so this is our kiln area. This is all of our staging shelving. There's pieces in different stages of either being unloaded or getting ready to load into the kiln. Um, all of our kiln furniture lives here too. 
This is our little baby house kiln that we have, <laughs> like just big enough for Sierra and I to fire things. And students work. That's we do true. we do have um, small workshops. So yeah, some of these are students' work. Mm -hmm. so, um, this was my old kiln that was a, a sitter kiln um, that we is still functional, but we just replaced that with the the new the new version that Sierra bought recently. Yeah. It's just, you know, a million times easier to use as the electric control panel than it is to worry about a sitter kiln misfiring. <laughs> as nice as it is, and it has done us really well. It's a good table right now, though. Yeah, great table. So. <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Some runoff for work, because you know you can never have too many shelves. This is actually Gabo's work. And yeah, I was going to say, oh, that yeah. looks familiar. Yeah. <laughs> so they were here this summer. We have to ship these to them. That they left mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's really interesting to see uh, how like close knit the ceramics community is. I mean, like I'll say to someone who lives here who's a potter, oh, this person we're having an event tonight for our show, and like, oh, oh, yeah, I met them when I was at, at Penland or where you know, wherever I was. So it's really, um, really, really cool to see. So, um, yeah, well, we're uh, so <laughs> when <laughs> say it one more time. Oh, I said, yeah, it is. It does often feel like a small, tight knit community of people. Yeah, yeah, I think it's got, I don't know, community seems like it's it's built in. I mean, the way that, you know, studios have to kind of function. I mean, you can obviously do this on your own, but you feel a need to kind of like have other people around you, right? To have, have a community built in. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely, there's so much to learn from each other and the inspiration of seeing what people are coming up with and um, even just like technique wise, mm -hmm. there's so much to experiment with. It's fun. It's so much more fun to do that with others and be able to play around with new things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you open up the new studio, I mean, will you have your own personal studios there? I mean, in that space, or will you also still use the space you're in now? Um, we will be using the the new studio as our main space, but we won't personally be having like a separate from the main floor, we'll just be using it as our members would be using. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. It'll probably be a little mix of both. We'd probably still store our work here more regularly, um, but like this kiln, we'll probably move to that space to be our test kiln, and we have we'll have two other large kilns there as well. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Uh, well, well, great. This has been really wonderful to see uh, see your space and hear about the new space. And uh, if people want to, you know, kind of follow along and see the progress and, and know when things are opening up, especially people who are in Seattle or in, you know, close areas nearby, uh, where can they find, find that information? We're most active on our Instagram, which is Reclaim Clay Collective. Uh, we do have a website as well. It's just reclaimclay.com. Uh, is that it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. And uh, as I said at the beginning of this uh, event, you can uh, see cups in the exhibition, uh, the cup, the mug on our website, Main Street Arts CS, Main Street Arts CS .org. Uh, I do know our URL. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, you can see that through uh, tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, there are still great cups left uh, in the exhibition. Uh, especially by these two artists right here that we just talked with. Uh, so please go check that out. And um, really, I think any cup you see that you like, you should just buy it. That's what I recommend. So yeah. um, <laughs> that, that's what I do. Yeah. Doesn't <laughs> um, everyone? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so thank you both again. And uh, good luck with, with everything with the new space. And we'll look forward to, uh, to following along. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, take care.